Hi, I'm Tim Berglund, and I'd like to introduce you to the Streams API for Apache Kafka. Now, imagine you had a super robust, world-class, horizontally scalable messaging system that was open source and was so broadly deployed as to be ubiquitous. The nice thing about imagining this is that you don't have to work very hard. That system is Apache Kafka. And if you build a lot of systems with Kafka and you go through this kind of bare exercise of producing messages into topics and consuming messages from topics, you'll find that there's a lot of work you have to do over time. Now, that really is a pretty low-level API. And there are certain patterns that are going to emerge. You find that you're not so much always just dealing with messages, but you're looking for a higher level of abstraction. And that is what the Streams API is. And if you're entirely new to Kafka and you don't know this whole world of topics and producers and consumers, that's fine too. I'm going to tell you how the Streams API looks at the world, give you an idea of some of its unique characteristics that we're going to walk through the API in subsequent episodes. You should leave this series with a good idea of how Kafka Streams is put together and ready to begin exploring the demo app and writing code of your own. Now, you want to think of a stream as an unbounded, continuous flow of real-time records. Sometimes we'll call them records, sometimes we'll call them facts. Uh, often, when we're talking about streams, we don't say message like we would in the traditional world of Kafka. A stream is this unbounded flow of facts. It never stops. When you start processing it, there is no time in the future when you'll be done. Those records themselves are structured as key value pairs. Now, as you may know, inside Kafka, those are untyped byte arrays. They can be whatever you want to be. But from the standpoint of the API that we're going to look at, those are very much typed things. So you might have a stream whose key is, say, a string, and the value is a long, maybe a count of something like that. So the message is a key and a value. And as we dig deeper into these, we'll see that there is a type system that helps us a little bit with keeping our messages straight. So the Streams API, then, is a system for transforming and enriching these streams of data. It supports per-record stream processing. There's no micro-batching going on here at all. Every record that comes into a stream is processed and considered on its own. And that can get you to millisecond latency in a system that's tuned well. And as we'll see as we dig into the API, there are stateless transformations. Those are things like filtering and mapping. There are stateful transformations. Those are things like joins and aggregations. And on those stateful transformations, there are also various ways to deal with the problem of windowing. Usually in stream processing, you want to say, well, I'm concerned with counting over the last minute's worth of data or the last day's worth of data or something like that. Kafka Streams has pretty flexible support for windowing. And in my mind, one of the best things architecturally about Kafka Streams is that it wants to be a part of your application. There is no separate processing cluster that you deploy, where you take code and you take, say, a jar file and serialize it and move it across a network and have it run on some other cluster of machines. Uh, the streams code runs inside your application. So if you're deploying, say, a suite of microservices, and each microservice wants to read in a stream and process the individual facts in that stream, do something with them, and create a new stream as its output, all that stream processing code is running in process inside the microservice itself. Now, that raises a number of questions, and we'll answer those as the series goes on. But this is a very important architectural property of Kafka Streams that results in some important wins for how you deploy your applications and really how your system is structured. So keep it in mind. This lets you develop in whatever system you want. It can be on Mac, Windows, Linux, the IDE of your choice. This is a Java API, and there are no real other constraints on how you want to run. If you need to run just locally on a single node Kafka cluster that's deployed on your development machine, easy, no problem. Exactly the same code that will run in production can run on that one local node. But, of course, it doesn't need to stay there. Kafka Streams is elastically scalable. It is fault tolerant, just like we would expect it to be in any modern stream processing system. The assumption is when you're building a streams application, you are building a distributed system. And that's a hard thing to do. Kafka itself solves a lot of the problems of being a distributed messaging system for you. And now to distribute your computation, we locate that computation with your application and Streams gives you some help in scaling that application out. And this introduction will cover a few of the details there so you can at least be satisfied that this is a workable and frankly, really smart solution. 
Again, another consequence of this is that it's completely deployment agnostic. And hey, are you deploying to containers and orchestrating in Kubernetes? Wonderful. Uh, there's no tension there at all between the Kafka Streams deployment model and a leading edge deployment architecture like that. If you're running in VMs or bare metal or cloud instances or on-prem machines, None of that matters. No matter how you're deploying this Java application, Streams is a part of the application and it gets deployed with your code. So you're able to get started with the current state of your deployment automation and grow that as that part of your tech stack grows. That's really orthogonal to any of the concerns of Kafka Streams. It's just saying, hey, look, you're a Java program. You've built me into you. It's fine. Deploy me however you want. And because you don't need to stand up a separate cluster to do your stream processing, Kafka Streams is equally viable across scale. If you're a very small scale system, say you've got a three node Kafka cluster, which is really the minimum viable deployment for production for Kafka. And you've got a simple app that you wanna stand up to do your stream processing. And you say, hey, for now, this really only needs to be running one instance. That's fine, it's completely viable for that. There really is no minimum transaction cost you have to get up over before it feels worth it. Likewise, if you're gonna deploy 100 instances of your various stream processing apps, some complex suite of microservices, some of which need 10 instances to run at scale, some of which run on a single instance just fine, Kafka Streams is economical on the small use cases and the large ones as well. Now, all the communication that a Kafka Streams application does with other applications is all through Kafka. It's using Kafka from first to last. So any of Kafka's built-in security mechanisms, if you need data to be encrypted over the wire, for example, totally fine. It's completely compatible with the existing Kafka security mechanisms. Also, as of release 0.11, it supports exactly once processing semantics. This isn't a thing we'll dive deeply into in this introduction to streams. Exactly once is covered very well in other places, but those semantics are available to you in your stream processing application in recent releases, that is 0.11 or later, and that's a big deal. And most importantly, Streams is a part of the open source Apache Kafka project. So this is really a native built-in Kafka feature. So no asterisks or exceptions or special notes of any kind. This is just Kafka. Now I know I have said this already, but I wanna say it one more time because it's such an important and frankly counterintuitive thing. And that's that your stream processing code that you write with the API that I'm gonna show you in the next episodes of this series, that code runs in the context of your application. That is to say, Kafka Streams is a Java dependency. It's a jar, it's a library that you program. And that code, you declare it as a dependency in your Gradle or your Maven build, and that becomes a part of your application. It really is as simple as that. So all of the work that it has to do in aggregating or filtering or mapping or counting, or whatever it is it's gonna do, that work gets done in process. So it's not code that you deploy to some special processing cluster. Or put differently, streams applications do not execute on brokers. Brokers are busy just being Kafka. They're handling messaging. The stream processing work is done inside your application. Now, a couple of notes there. You may be thinking, well, that compute has to get done somewhere. It's not like it's free just because it happens in my application. Of course, you're right. Doing stream processing is extra computational work and it's even extra IO. So you are adding work as you do rich and complex stream processing things. That's computation that needs to get done somewhere. It gets done inside your application. The assumption is your application, if it had been an old fashioned Kafka consumer and you had done all of this work yourself, then you probably would have had to scale it anyway. And the consumer group mechanism would have helped you do that. Kafka Streams does that same thing. So again, if deploying a single instance of your application just isn't enough compute power and you need to deploy two or five or 10 or 30 instances, that's fine. The Streams API is gonna help you divide that work among the instances in your processing cluster. A lot of the things that would have been hard about building that little piece of distributed system are made easy. So the work is pushed into the application, but you get lots of help scaling the application. And this is a good idea for a number of reasons. We already talked about how it's deployment agnostic. There's absolutely no tension with deploying to containers. 
Also, you really want all your code to stay in one place. You don't want to say, hey, this is my stream processing code. Let me make this build and I'll deploy it over here. This is my quote unquote application and I'll have all my cool deployment automation pushing this automatically uh, to these containers or cloud instances over there. You don't want to break that up. We've done that a number of times in the last 15 years and it's always worked out kind of badly, uh, particularly in the case of real-time stream processing. So Kafka Streams wants to keep all of that together key, key architectural component and architectural advantage. Now, that's it just for introduction and basic principles. If you want to follow along in the next episode in the series, we're going to look at actual code and you'll get to see how easy it can be to write a stream processing application with Kafka Streams. Mm -hmm.